So hello everybody, I promised you an in-depth review of all the connections of the Ableton Push 3, especially the integrated audio interface, and this is what we're gonna do today. Additional to that, I released a new version of Driven by Moss, which is a totally free extension for Bitwig Studio as well as Cocos Reaper, and it allows you to use tons of controllers with these stores, especially now also the Ableton Push. Three and I also released an update to this which has now a new configuration page for configuring the audio settings as well for the audio interface and we're gonna look into that but first let's have a look at all the possible connections we have at the push 3 which is quite a lot because Ableton made this decision to integrate a full-blown audio interface. And we're gonna discuss now the pros and cons of this decision. So first thing is price, as I talked already before. I think integrating such a high-end audio interface adds quite a lot to the price. So I would have seen definitely, and I think a lot of other users too, seen a controller-only version, which could be, I think, much cheaper without the audio interface. But maybe it's easier to build for them and the option to integrate later on the standalone version into it, I guess it's much easier for them in the production process. So let's have a look at what is possible here. So we have two line outputs, we have two line inputs. It's not only line, there is also a preamp, so you can use dynamic microphones to that. We will check out all of this in a second, so stay tuned. And there is this, I think it's a weird decision. A lot of people, testers, applauded to that decision to have an ADAT extension, but we will also talk the pros and cons later. The possibility is that you can add eight additional outputs and eight additional inputs. There is also MIDI, but on mini check plugs, I cannot tell you how much I hate them and how long I tested adapters again to make this work, but also about this in a second. We also have a USB connected to add additional controllers, but only controllers. So you cannot, like with the MPC, for example, you cannot attach an audio interface to that. So only controller keyboards or other controllers can be connected to that. And you can also connect a hub to that, so you could connect even more controllers. So this is quite interesting for a live context. Okay, you have the power plug and you have the USB-C connector which connects the device to your computer and you have two pedal connectors but these are not only pedal connectors you can also switch and configure them to be used as four cv outputs but also with a catch which i also did not hear in any of the reviews is that it's not dc coupled and this is absolutely essential if you want to do cv control but also about this in a second and finally we have a headphones plug-in a stereo headphones plug-in so let's start with something very simple. I connected an additional controller here. It's a launch key from Novation. And what surprised me a bit, it's not only something like MIDI in and out, it's the full deal. So this could also then be configured with Driven by Moss. So I can run the normal Driven by Moss extension for the launch key as well. And this is working also nicely. I did the test the USB hub, but I guess this will also work as intended and you could connect more controllers for live context, but even I guess if you do a live gig with a keyboard and the push three, you are ready to go. Okay, let's look at all this mess I had to make to show you all these different connections. It was really a nightmare to set this up and have total cable chaos here on my desk. Let's have another look at something simple. First, it's the MIDI out and the MIDI in. I just tried now the out to control here this drum machine up there. Let's switch to the drum machine is here. So I can play this up here via MIDI. I use here a hardware, a Bitwig hardware instrument and send it out to MIDI out three. So this was also something I had to figure out. It's communicating via the third output, which shows up here in your MIDI outputs. The next thing I'm already testing here is the line in. So we have two line ins, which can also be configured with a preamp so let's have a look at that as i showed you we are already here in audio settings 
And here you have the gain and amp settings for the left and for the right channel. So these two, and I connected this mono drum machine to the left input here. And for each of the inputs, you have three options. You can set it to line, you can set it to instrument and to high. So the difference is that you have an automatic preamp added to that. So high is especially helpful if you connect a dynamic microphone and instrument if you need a little bit more power. But for this drum machine, line level is more than enough. And if I start it, you will see the incoming, um, the incoming audio via that. So this is also working nicely. And you could also add some gain to it. But that's also something to note, this is not an analog preamp, this is digital gain. So it's just upscaling the incoming data. Same works for the second and I connected a microphone here. So you need to have here XLR on one side and cable which has here a normal jack plug. This should be the microphone channel. Hello, hello microphone, test one, two. Maybe let's record this. I'm testing the microphone for you, baby. I'm testing the microphone for you, baby. Yeah, sounds like a dynamic microphone, so fine with me. There's also no phantom power on this, only this will work, but I guess for a live context, this is really perfect that you have at least a microphone input, but then you will lose the option to have a stereo input. So if you want to connect a stereo synthesizer, for example, you have to do a choice. Okay, these are the stereo outputs, nothing to report about these. And we have now this interesting option to have an ADAT port, which I think a pretty weird decision. Also, I heard only a plot for that, but I don't see the use case. If you're in a studio, I think you want to have nowadays a higher resolution than 44.1K because the audio interface goes up to 192k which is absolutely lovely uh, the manual strangely says 96k but the asio driver on windows goes up to 192k which is really great but as soon as you connect the ADAT light pipe here it fixes to 40.1k which is not surprising which is how it is with ADAT but you should be aware of that and for a live use case look at the cable so this is the aided cable this is nothing i want to go on stage with <laughs> as simple as that so i think the choice that akai made with the mpc to have an uh, option to attach an audio interface via usb is i think the much better and easier solution then you can also get what you want you can for example get a proper xlr input and you can get phantom power and all these things which you cannot do sure you can get an interface which does that too but then you have the issue to carry this light pipe and you have the limitation with the 44 dot one k sample rate but nevertheless let's quickly check that out i have connected here on my modular system i have an expert sleepers es8 connected and if we look at the audio inputs which i will explain also in a second we have here the aided ones and I just connected a sign output from an oscillator on the modular rack and you see it's coming in here let's try the second So now the sine wave is coming on the second input and this is working nicely. I don't want to go into too much detail with the ES8. If you're interested in that, I have an older video which I will link down in the comments about the ES8, which will show the use of that with Bitwig in detail. And looking at the audio inputs and outputs, it was actually not too easy to figure out what is what and what is going on here with the interface. It turns out it's showing up 16 inputs and 16 output but why 16 now it took me a bit to figure that out so for the input buses you have here the two line inputs first and then we have three and four and so far i have no idea what these two inputs are if someone has an idea or knows about it please tell me down in a comment i'm really curious about that then we have four inputs for the food switch so this is also something strange we need to talk about and then finally we have the eight eight inputs for the outputs we have also 
one and two are the speaker outputs. You can use three and four for the headphones. You can configure here in the settings if you want to hear three and four on the headphones or simply duplicate the one and two outputs. So H is headphone and S is the speaker. And you could change that, that you want to hear 3.4 on the headphones or the other way around is also possible. So there is also here this hardware option to change your headphones. And what you could also do with that, you can configure then to have here your headphones enabled or not in Bitwig. This works also nicely, but I cannot show you that since you cannot wear my headphone at home. <laughs> and you can also use a solo SQ, so you could send here if you do a Q solo to have only that signal on your headphone, which makes especially sense if you do some DJ set live. So, and back to here, and we finally have the eight ADA outputs as well. Now we need to talk about the weirdest bit, which are the two foot controllers. So first let's check out these settings so you can switch between foot switch and CV output for these two things. And here I connected normal, very dirty foot switch from Yamaha, there it is. And you can, for example, I play here, let's press it. This is the configuration for the first one is a sustain pedal and this works. But now something strange I noticed, if you look at the inputs again, these inputs are also showing as an input and if I press it, you will see the signal as well for the foot switch. And this is also coming from the foot switch. So the pedal has a stereo plug. So these two are showing for the first one and the second one. And I'm really curious if this will work also as an audio input. So that's something I did not try yet. So let's make this experiment and see if something explodes here. Let's connect here my mini prude for a second, which should make a sound. Okay, so let's try to record that and see what's happening. It sounds pretty rough and dirty to me. But it's working, that's really, really funny. So, <laughs> as you see, it has a high noise level and it sounds a bit crunchy, but I think as a workaround, it will give you, I think, four more inputs, which is actually pretty cool. And I did not hear about this yet. So, cool. So, so let's have a look at the second. I'm making music for several, several, several years and I never needed such an adapter which goes from a jack to a mini jack. And I this is not really working because this is stereo on stereo, but you need stereo on mono, but just that you see it. And this is also something I needed to note what is in the package if you get it. So the only thing in the package is you get the power adapter and you get this USB-C which cable, which is an absolutely choke. Um, this is just too short for anything. So first thing I had to do before I even could use the push, I had to get a long USB-C cable, which also took me some days <laughs> to get started. And also for the MIDI or this strange thing, there is no adapter included in the package, which I think is pretty bad for a device for 1000 euro. You could at least expect a MIDI adapter for that, but okay, that's how it is. So because this is stereo, I cannot really show you the CV output because the trick with that is that you need to have the cable just a little bit plugged in and this is rather weird but nevertheless we could give it a try oh, it's working. Great. <laughs> you see this is working but something i also didn't hear in any review it's not dc coupled and if you wonder why you need the C coupling, there's even a text on Ableton's website about the CV tools that it's very important to have a DC coupled audio interface and why you need one. 
There are also more in-depth things by the expert sleepers, people which do also the ES8, why this makes sense. So especially if you want to have LFOs, this is an issue because it cuts off the low end. It works for some things as I showed you, but if you expect this to be a proper CV interface, it is not. Then you would need to go the ADAT way, which I showed you with the ES8, for example. To sum up, what do I think about all the connections? It gives you a lot of flexibility, but as I said, it's a little bit of a mixed bag because in the studio, I would love to see different things or have my proper audio interface anyway. And for the stage, I think it's some weird decisions with the ADAT light pipe and also not having an XLR input. Yeah, it's something that uh, could be improved on the device, but I guess this are all reasons to keep the small form factor on these things. But I'm really curious, what do you think about it? Is it a good idea to have this audio interface? Am I missing something? Did you learn all the things with it? What do you do with it? Tell me in the comments below. And until next time, make some funky music. <laughs>